So, election analysis, uh, probably 24 hours after the uh, races were decided, uh, and my uh, analysis of yesterday is holding true, especially because I looked on uh, Fox News, right, because they're going to be the Republican point of view, and they're really, I, I only found really one show that addressed the issues of what happened in this election, and, uh, you know, that I could see Sean Hannity and so on. It, it, there was no uh, fight from uh, Fox News over interpreting these things. They were pretty, it wasn't that they were conceding this is bad for Republicans, but by their silence, they are conceding it, in my opinion. And um, so, w what do I, th what have, what's in my analysis that's not in the corporate media analysis, uh, well, really three things. I was going to start to say one, but I'm actually going to say three because the first two were the most important and they're just completely out of mainstream media. Number one, Mr. Trump uh, uh, ended the INF nuclear treaty for no reason uh, and has put us all in danger of nuclear annihilation. There is no safety net now. There is no nuclear treaty with Russia over these important intermediate range missiles. Uh, all the presidents before had no problem with super Republican, super hawk Ronald Reagan's treaty that existed until Mr. Trump terminated it. Not George Bush Sr., not Bill Clinton, not George Bush Jr., not Barack Obama. Who is Donald Trump to come along and tell us that uh, that, that Ronald Reagan's treaty was no good and we should operate without a nuclear treaty. Um, I could go on. People are not going to be fooled, I don't believe, by uh, the media's blackout on the subject of life or death. Uh, and um, although Mr. Trump pushes, uh, in my opinion, probably true, uh, thing about the Russia Gate was was an attempted coup. Uh, I'm equally alarmed by his attempted coup. With the, forgive me for giving my opinion on this. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh, the U.S. Supreme Court justices, are saying that he has the right to declare an emergency and spend money that hasn't been appropriated by Congress, take money out, steal money that has been appropriated by Congress and use it for his border wall or anything he wants to, right? This is a complete violation of the Constitution. That's a coup. Now, in terms of the working within the parameters of the mainstream media commentary, uh, the other thing that I would point out, Time Magazine was so good in its reporting, maybe they deserve a Pulitzer for this, they said, uh, sometime was it in April, that uh, Mr. Trump announced he can defy the laws of gravity, he can violate uh, political laws by winning an election, only appealing to his base and not having, that he doesn't have to appeal to the swing voters, right? I mean, like, um, as I said in my previous commentary, um, I really would estimate that a fifth grader, certainly a seventh grader, how, whatever those ages are, 11 and 13, if I'm not mistaken, uh, are smarter than Mr. Trump. If, if the re Republican voters are 30% of the electric, electorate, uh, Democratic voters, I believe, are 31%, and re uh, independent voters are 38%. Now, what Mr. Trump told Time Magazine, this was this... Uh, fatal political flaw, I believe. This is, this is what's causing him to lose. Uh, he said that he can win. He's so uh, w such a phenomenon that he can win by just appealing to his 30% Republican electorate base uh, and energizing them. But I submit to you that a, a fifth grader or seventh grader could see through that and say, no, no, if the math doesn't add up. If you, to get over 50% of the vote, you can't do it by just appealing to 30%. You've got to go to the mid, middle section there, the 38% of independents. Right, this is like, are you kidding? Um, that's why I'm saying that an 11 or 13 year old is smarter than Mr. Trump. Uh, 
about getting elected because they, they would say, oh yeah, you've got to get the 38% to get to 50% to win the election. Basic mathematics. And uh, so then if, you, if we go on and, and incorporate the results, especially, well, in Virginia and Kentucky, uh, Mr. Trump lost the suburbs. They used to be solidly Republican, according to the commentators. Now they've swung. And so that also is reflective of his statement. He can appeal to his base. His base are uh, uh, non-college degree whites, right? Whites who don't have a college degree, but the suburbs are, let's just say, predominantly, I suppose, whites who do have a college degree. So he's, he's saying, you know, let's, I'll go with the, uh, anyway, so how would he appeal to the people in the suburbs? Uh, that becomes perhaps controversial because I, I don't necessarily agree with what I'm about to say, but they, the people in the suburbs want four things that have come to my mind uh, that Mr. Trump is unwilling to give or even try to uh, uh, pretend that he's giving. Uh, they, they want action on climate change. Uh, they want some kind of gun control legislation. Uh, they want uh, um, kindness to uh, minorities, not hatred for, you know, vilifying immigrants. That's my perception. Uh, and uh, they want uh, better treatment of women. Right? Um, and he's making no effort on those. And, and so w what am I seeing here? What's my analysis? And who am I, right? But it, it's, I'm actually going to send this to some of the people in the media because I think they're missing something. What I'm saying is that Mr. Trump committed political suicide by telling Time Magazine of his decision, or, you know, obviously the suicide was the decision to do what a, a fifth grader or a seventh grader would have told him not to do, believe that he can uh, walk on water, that he can win 50% of the vote by only appealing to 30% of the electorate, that he can win by energizing his base.